Hello, welcome to uh, my webinar here. Uh, thanks for joining me here on this Wednesday evening. I'm gonna get started right to it here. Um, so bear with me one sec. All right, I'm just getting set up here. So uh, welcome uh, again to our Spring Professional Series here. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about alternative summer plans to uh, you know, explore many options in addition to internships to help move your career forward. So first things first, um, I'm going to do this one in the slideshow uh, this way, make it a little easier. So again, I introduce myself. Um, my name is Jim Mackwater, Assistant Director here at the uh, Shavat Glavak uh, Center for Strategy, a Career Strategy and Professional Development. That's our new title. Still get my brain around about that one, so bear with me. Um, so first and foremost, there's our, uh, that is our vision here to um, help our students to think strategically about designing uh, their careers during college, during graduation, and then at graduation schooling for the rest of their life. Um, so bear with me one second again here. All right, so uh, there's me, uh, a picture from a few years ago, so I need to update that probably here. So, but I've uh, been in higher education for uh, many years, uh, many aspects of career services here. So um, just to dive right into it, um, you know, so many things we could do here. I mean, this is uh, an unprecedented time, of course, that's an understatement of the year. Um, so, what we're getting at here is, uh, you know, what, what we can do in addition to summer internships and, you know, just trying to be adaptable and flexible and understand there's many ways to add experiences to your resume. Of course, we should always try to pursue internships, but there's many other ways to try to think outside the box here. Um, the first step, though, please take advantage of our Career Center. The Career Center, um, we have so many resources. We're always here to support you, me and everyone on the team. Uh, we have tons of events. Uh, tons of opportunities, even if it's uh, virtual. Um, we also have some other great resources too, uh, mainly YUMBP uh, is a great mentorship platform for students to network, uh, YUCL um, for our career link where we post all of our um, internships and job opportunities. Um, the way I explain to students the way uh, to understand why MVP is the best way to uh, outreach to alums, which is a great place to start for networking is uh, these are hundreds of alums who are definitely willing to help, ready to help. Uh, so nice ways to start out to start seeking advice, speaking, seeking insights, just starting to talk to people in your profession to start exploring and never too early to start. And then career link is where we uh, post all of our internships and job opportunities, like I said, also uh, any of our events in case you miss them through all of our emails. Uh, but YUMVP is also a great place to start for looking for positions and also for intentional networking because these are usually YU alums or friends of YU. You know, our, our recruiters intentionally recruiting at YU looking for students such as yourselves. So definitely uh, two wonderful resources to start with. And then also we have Canvas. Uh, that's where we keep all of our resources. It's also on the website too. Everything and anything you might need advice on uh, from writing a cover letter, informational interview, personal statement, uh, how to prep uh, for anything and everything you might need, uh, graduate interviews, mock interviews, uh, the list goes on and on. We have many ways to help you out. So some great resources to always refer back to. Um, also another uh, instance last summer, uh, of course, uh, first pivot was uh, with COVID was uh, the summer of opportunity. Uh, what we put together. And so there's talk of uh, coming up with another version of it and maybe a little different, but it was a chance for students to get some uh, experience teaming up with businesses, uh, working on real life projects to uh, kind of build out uh, your resume and experience. So keep an eye out for summer opportunity version 2.0. And then also keep in mind here at Yeshiva, other, keep in mind other offices, uh, academic departments, uh, you know, summer research and professors and all that too. I also want to mention too, um, Handshake is available. I use that many other institutions. If you have a .edu address, it is free to all students throughout the country. Uh, maybe something worth checking out too. Um, tons of opportunities there also uh, to leave no stone unturned. Um, that's another resource to utilize. To move on, um, you know, just continue. Remember for your, your searching, you know, the, for good or bad, um, the this pandemic has offered now 
you could be doing remote opportunities now that some places that maybe you know you never would have had a chance to work at now you can and also there may be YU alums there also, friends of YU also. So throughout the, not only the United States, but internationally too. Um, so there's a few sites that I found when I was digging around, uh, intern from home, uh, Jospresso and Simba I've never used. So uh, just going by some recommendations that's online. I know any, uh, any of you are very more than capable to find any of these resources too. I just wanna throw a few things out there. Um, Indeed is one of the ones I, I use always with students as a starting point. Once you understand how Indeed works, you can understand any of them. You can use the words like, uh, you, as long as you know how to advance search terms, which I'll always help students with, but understand putting remote, virtual, you know, in your field of interest and what you're looking for. Uh, Indeed has also added um, a, a search parameter that is actually remote. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but remember, Indeed is, is a great place. One top stop, I always say, is it, it is an algorithm. Uh, it's a compiler uh, for any positions if it's posted on an internship. Um, internship or job is posted on, an on a website, Indeed will grab it. It's a great place to start. Uh, some of the things that Indeed does, but always uh, bottom line, use it for research tool, use it for networking. Of course, if you see positions, apply on the company's website. Highly recommend. Um, so, you know, definitely understand now that you have a, a world of opportunity instead of uh, looking at it as uh, definitely a, a deficit. It's something else that can open up to opportunities and other students have talked already for last summer, found other opportunities, found a remote and uh, definitely keeps moving, moving the career forward. Uh, there's another um, information I found during my research uh, using the crowdsourcing. I uh, can't pretend I'm an expert, but uh, Candor um, is one of them that is uh, trying to use a hiring status tab. What these are, his, these are, these are um, resources used, you can even Google it too. Even though my sons are in college, dad don't say Google, Google it, but search up uh, these compilers are saying who is hiring, what companies are hiring for internships here in 2021 in the summer. So um, Candor started out as another website, but started using a user generated list. So these are user generated. These are active sources. GitHub uses one. Um, and I know LinkedIn, one of the most favorite articles of a follow my LinkedIn feed is who's hiring now. Uh, that's a constant uh, article that keeps coming up and people are helping each other out, updating on spreadsheets, <laughs> even uh, everyone trying to help out as best they can from what companies are still hiring, looking for interns. Definitely stay in touch with that. Um, another way to pivot for this too, we mentioned last summer uh, when COVID hit is, um, you know, all these things too, whether it's COVID or no COVID, um, I know the elephant is in the room, but um, this is just a way to kind of pivot and look at different ways. But here's a situation where it's true opportunities arise that, hey, <laughs> you got to look for the organizations who have had to adapt or whose services are now in high demand. And it really changes things. It really does change things that, um, you know, logistics companies, uh, if you're like operations management list logistics, obviously Amazon's nailing it. And then, oh yeah, there's other companies out there. Um, but, you know, any of these health focused startups um, from any local biotech, um, you, you name it. You know, you never know. And, and you know, if there's any other kind of local companies that are doing research, I know some pre-med students or any biology or chemistry students too. I mean, definitely diving into some of the uh, local uh, pharmaceuticals, even more so, need be. Um, let's check my notes here. Oh, also too, um, like learning technologists, you know, for the support. I know there's one computer science student I was working with who uh, is helping out. Um, you know, with online learning, with schools helping support with programming and coding, uh, back end development, some to um, some other students are doing some front end development or just even just the support here even at YU. <laughs> and one, one or two students are just doing the Zoom support for all the professors, and all of us. So. Um, but also, I know working with some pre med students too. You know, there's no virtual health healthcare support. I mean, it's very challenging, of course, for students to try to get their pre med experiences and of course medical that's another conversation medical uh, schools understand this but now there's virtual telehealth all these support systems um you know that have, have now opened up that are definitely needed so students are helping out virtually um are shadowing virtually too uh, with uh, with doctors medical offices etc so you never know you never know what other kind of opportunities could definitely pop up so definitely check them out um this speaks for itself you know you have to be ready and that's what we do in the career center try to make sure our students are all as well prepared as possible and ready to go um obviously resume ready to go 
whether tailored for different industries, tailored for specific jobs, but I'd work with students um, if you need to. But you know, the resume should be pretty much ready to go and ready to jump on different opportunities and really you know, be able to pivot. So definitely meet with us. Um, your LinkedIn profile, definitely make sure that's totally updated. You know, the summary section, the about section, you know, there's a little elevator pitch section you should have finished that one little section that says about, I think now they keep changing the name. Uh, your skills section is get that up to date. Make sure you're asking for recommendations from previous, uh, from professors if you can, former teachers, um, any former supervisors. Um, also keep in mind too, uh, you know, LinkedIn's getting better for, you know, you can put link to projects, portfolios, any work you've done, any creative aspects, uh, anything. You can put links to it, which is pretty great. You can also start listing some projects you're working on too. And that's also another section in LinkedIn. So some students don't even realize it's there. And then of course now cover letters, you know, you have to tailor them to every job you apply for. So I know as many students I want to talk to, they're like, I want to have the generic cover letter, but trust me, uh, uh, employers and myself too, you can see that a mile away when students are boilerplating. So you can have a rough idea of what you want to put for your cover letter, but do read the job description to make sure that your resume and application materials are not skipped when I can see you haven't done any effort into your cover letter. So keep that in mind. Um, but there you go. So be able to jump quickly. And many students are meeting me and others. That, that's been my constant conversation. Students are ready to go for anything that pops up and, and be well prepared. So you should also be too. Um, again, the most important part of, of our career path is, you know, networking, 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 networking. Um, you know, so, you know, it's so important. Um, you know, you never know what kind of connections you have, but it, it's something that's going to be fruitful for the rest of your lives. And, you know, I always tell students too, I don't like wasting much time, but any of these conversations I have with people, you know, as long as they're genuine and, you know, you, you, are, you truly care, um, you know, you, you truly are looking for knowledge. And that's one other thing when you're in college, you are in a position to seek knowledge, asking for advice, asking for insight. And that's what networks talk about. And, you know, I've had one or two students that I've talked to too that I can tell they're like, oh yeah, yeah, blah, 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 ask a question about themselves and see where it goes. Now, when you have that attitude like that, someone can see through that very quickly, you're not genuine. So you must be genuine, have an intentional outreach. Just got to say that any part of networking, it isn't just about checking the boxes and just moving through the next person because it's missing the whole point. And never, ever ask anyone for something they can't give. Even if I was hiring, it's like, I just met you. <laughs> you know, sorry to make a joke about, but seriously, I mean, you can't ask for something they can't give. We, you know, and you always hear about students or anyone who has referrals. Still remember, family, friends, and you hear the stories, but remember, you have to nail the interview and you have to nail the job. So, you know, by the way, it is, but, you know, to be so bold to say, give me a job, or do you know any jobs, tends for the most time usually not to work. Unless you're in sales, different story. We should talk. <laughs> Sales professionals, a little different. So, but you never know who you're talking to. So understand, you know, we have our own personal network, whether you use LinkedIn or not, but the idea, you know, let them know you're seeking, you know, I'm looking for the summer. And as another thing, the little phrase, I mean, I joke with students too, do you need a job? Do you need an internship? Well, yes. So the moment you say, you know, I'm graduating soon. Okay. I need, I know you need a job. Never ask. I never asked specifically for a job and you know, say I'm currently in school looking for experiences. Okay, I know you need an internship. So people usually cue on that very quickly. So if they can help you out, they'll try. If they can't, they can't. Usually people can tell us and, and the worst that happens is that networking people say no, and they ignore us, move on. Uh, but remember, start out with your family, friends, your shul, uh, always. Friend, family, friends, aunts, uncles, brothers, cousins, whomever, you know, always referrals work great. Um, students kind of always kind of dismiss it sometimes. Well, I know it's just a family friend, and but no, this is important stuff. And if I'm a recruiter, that's what I'm looking for that you're starting out early, get some experiences, and you're still trying to do something, especially here with this crazy pandemic. As long as you're trying to be proactive, all these things we're talking about here, always about being proactive. And then, of course, you build it out, you know, family, friends, professors, don't forget them, you know, your previous supervisors. And then, of course, YU alums and friend of y, friends of YU, you know, YU MVP is for the YU alums. And, of course, use a LinkedIn to build out further and friends of YU. Uh, then don't forget online industry specific networks. Uh, professional organizations have great uh, blogs, networking opportunities, uh, newsletters, anything you possibly have. You know, whether it's in LinkedIn or outside of LinkedIn, th there's tons of them. You know, definitely get involved in there. Start being an active participant. Ask questions. And remember, you are seeking knowledge. Uh, you know, it's other joke I say about networking. You know, people love to give advice and people love to talk about themselves. And then I change that. I realize some people don't like to give advice, but even asking people about insights, ask about what they do. 
it's always very educational. So you can learn more. You can find out what people do. Go, oh, that sounds really interesting. Or well, I definitely don't want to do that. That's always important too. And then also in the online networking too, LinkedIn groups are very, very, very helpful. And if you have your LinkedIn account set up, your profile ready to go uh, within these groups, even if you're not remotely connected, you could LinkedIn allows you to send messages to people within these groups. And there's a way to communicate on LinkedIn too. We'll talk about that, how to do it for free without paying any money. So different things we can strategize with, give us a holler. Um, to move on. There's the micro experiences, which is kind of relatively, I won't say new, but it, you know, Dewey Parker has, Parker Dewey, excuse me, I say it backwards. <laughs> um, Parker Dewey has started these, these short micro internships and you get paid and it's, they're doing real life practical experience. And, you know, I always tell students too, coming from a higher education background, and, you know, education background, just kindergarten through college, everything. But the idea is, let's face it, we're, st we're set up on an old fashioned system that's hundreds, thousands of years old, where you go from theory to practical usage. So Parker Dewey really nailed it. Come to these micro internships where employers are actually going, hey, no, we have problems, we have things, we need solutions. You know, it almost goes back to the networking you hear about when you get more advanced about pain letters, about what you can bring to an employer. Well, here you go. They're looking for college level students who say, hey, we'll pay you some money here for a few weeks, a few days, whatever. Here, we need, we have this problem. Please help us solve it, whatever it might be. And then Inside Sherpa is another one that's, that's for unpaid, you know, different processes. So definitely check those out. And I'm sure there's other websites that have since popped up, but these two are the big ones. Uh, another big option or another big opportunity or something that students sometimes um, don't consider. Now, of course, I understand. I'd much rather see everyone get paid for what they're doing, but then sometimes also, I mean, I tell students, if you can't find out what you, what you got, I mean, it's still okay to work and then volunteer on the side here. Nonprofit, the reason why I mentioned nonprofit organizations because they definitely need our help. Um, and the barriers to entry are a lot lower. But you also got to think about what's going on here. Um, not that many students would do this, um, but you know, even if you volunteer for an hour a week, <laughs> or an hour a month, you can still put it current in your resume. So I know most students, no, would never do that. They try to volunteer as much as they can. What a, way, a lovely way to give back, but also helping your community too, but gaining some great experiences. So yeah, some little simple examples too. Like for instance, oh, you know, we, you want to do some marketing? Well, ask them if they need help with their, their website, social media, even computer science, programming, um, you know, writing, if you, if you like to write, uh, you know, copywriting, documentary, film, even um, lots of organizations need help with grant writing if you love writing, um, you know, so for marketing, computer science, um, you know, even for pre-legal experience. I mean, th the list goes on and on and on because there's other things going on here. Not only do you volunteer, does it look awesome on your resume that you're helping out and you're also helping out a good view, but remember the intentional networking. I even talked to pre-medical students too. I mean, any of these health organizations, guess who's on the board of directors? Guess who's the CEO or CFO or something like that or have their links to the board of directors to people who are professionals in the field. So just got to think about that. Uh, you know, accounting, finance students, even if you can't volunteer, you set up appointments, talk to the CFO, you know, talk to CEO. I mean, they, they need, you know, they're willing to help and talk. Um, so volunteer match is one I've never used, but I'm a big one on using idealists with many students very valuable. I always try to get, I direct students to do the organization search. Now, the difference between Indeed and Idealist, Indeed's a job, uh, pulls positions as an algorithm, pulls positions from websites, but doesn't pull from job boards. But like Idealist is a job board just for nonprofits. Um, they give uh, nonprofits a break, you know, they post volunteer opportunities for free, you know, internships for a few bucks and you know, jobs for, you know, not much more. Um, but usually for any nonprofit, you know, an idealist too, whether it's something actively posted or not, they always need help. So definitely, you know, jump in there and you can gain some very valuable work experience that employers love to see. And, um, you know, whether helping with fundraising, administrative tasks, you know, spreading that word. Now, understand even here, uh, an article I pulled up, even Deloitte, <laughs> you know, report from Deloitte saying something 80 plus percent of hiring managers are more likely to pick a candidate with volunteer experience. So they love seeing that. And again, like I said, it's one way to cobble things together here for the summer. Might it be, you know, uh, working a, a part-time job to get some cash if you need it and then volunteering and then maybe trying to do some of the experience shadowing, you know, doing some side work on uh, and on these other things we're talking about here too. Always think outside the box too, if you can't land a, an internship. Uh, another step is, uh, is continue on that, 
you know, building your own, you know, do an independent project uh, for computer science majors. It kind of speaks for itself, but a lot of students think, oh, only computer science majors can do that. No, I mean, you know, coding for your own website, but if you want to write, write your own novella. I mean, write your own short stories, you know, uh, do, do your own blog. I tell anyone, students who want to get into writing, you know, say, oh, I'm not published. Well, start a blog. Congratulations. You are now published. You know, start a podcast too. Share your views, all that too. Uh, share, you know, share information you want to share with the, talk about with the world. I mean, there's so many topics that you can get out there. Um, you know, I know some students even with finance and accounting will, will just start their own podcast and, you know, have some discussions with their friends, you know, virtually. So what's your take on, you know, the, the market today? You know, again, employers love seeing this. And it's not in addition to your resume, just showing that you're trying to be actively involved. Um, yeah, then some more creative stuff. I love that one I found online. It says build a robot. Well, you might not have, um, uh, you know, a welding shop in your backyard, but uh, yeah, even just do design software. Um, even trying to design things uh, for family members, all that stuff too, for you know, creative folks, for marketing. Uh, you know, get to know. Uh, that's another thing I'm talking about. You know, get to know Adobe Photoshop and all the uh, Adobe Effects, Adobe, all the other creative elements. We'll talk about in a moment. But even for others who like to be really creative, your own YouTube channel. Where you can also, can, I know one or two students have done this too, even finance and accounting majors, again, I use that as a sample. We're doing the same thing like a podcast, just saying, here, 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 uh, here's my take on this, here's my take on that, or to put it together with friends and kind of interview each other, kind of, you know, I talk about their thoughts and feelings. Uh, uh, other students, for, even for um, political, want to pursue political science or politics or, uh, you know, think tanks will do this. Um, also helps for any consultants too. All these things all add to your resume and hey, add it to your portfolio too. So, um, you know, it, it's definitely, you know, what are you doing when you, when, okay, if you can't lead an internship, what are you trying to do here? You know, and remember we talk about internship too. Is this, we're talking about a formal education internship, 40 hours a week for three credits. Well, no, it's also talking about just trying to get any kind of work, practical work experience too. Um, in addition, you could get into, um, you know, also continue learning. Employers love seeing this. I've seen many students have put this on their on their resumes, which speaks volumes, because it's just showing that you 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 try to do something. And as we all know, the future conversation is always going to be one. The interview question is going to say, "How did you how did you damn well handle a difficult situation?" Or more specifically, "How did you handle this this pandemic? How did it, how did you pivot?" Um, so another way here, you know, online courses. So a few that I know uh, for free knowledge, you know, Coursera, edX, and uh, Tableau. Uh, many students have used, um, you know, even if you're computer science, you know, hey, you know, dig in there, learn some code, new coding languages. There's some free ones too, as one example. Um, but even like I mentioned before, like the Adobe Creative Suites, you, you, they have uh, lots of online learning for free. Uh, like even LinkedIn Learning has something, you know, you can certify yourself on things, Excel, PowerPoint, Word, even Adobe, you name it, they have it. Um, but in addition to that too, um, you know, uh, any other software specific, uh, even, you know, County QuickBooks, I mean, you know, online learning, uh, some of my marketing students have talked about no Google AdWords. I've taught myself that too. Um, all great things, put them on your, so it just adds value to you when you do interview, when you put out your resume, you're going to stand out from other folks. Um, and again, shows motivation, drive, stick to it. If, I mean, all the other wonderful soft skills that employers look for, how else better to demonstrate it to say, hey, here's what I did on my own. Um, this one's a little more ambitious. I found it. I figured I'd include it, but start start an organization, starting nonprofits or and or foundations. I mean, this is outgrowth from students. You know, take that one nonprofit step many steps further here to really dive into it and um, you know get involved. I know many uh, YU students even just got got started just even helping distribute food around the Washington Heights area. Of course, doing it socially distancing properly, helping the food bank, but you know. You got some ideas with some of your friends, maybe really socially conscious, dive in there and really build out some, even supporting a nonprofit or helping them out, but even just come in with their own ideas. You know, you never know. Definitely check into it. You know, um, well, last things I'm going to talk about too, which kind of, it's, it's kind of obvious, I thought, but you never know. Just reach out to local businesses too. I mean, I kind of mentioned, alluded to the fact you're saying, hey, if you're a good, mar if you're a marketing student, you know, do some social media for someone, whether it's a nonprofit or a local business, um, you know, computer science, do the website development, accounting, do some bookkeeping, 
any and all of the above. It, it's just it, putting all these things together here, do, doing a couple things here will always look great on your resume if you can't land a, a specific internship. Um, now, granted, you might not get paid again, still, you know, it's still going to look good um, and also make you feel good about trying to help out local businesses too. And then also too, I mean, you know, as I mentioned before, Cobb and still is doing some other summer work or, you know, volunteering on the side is just the one example too. You know, um, anyone, given anyone's financial situation, of course, none of anyone's business, but, you know, if you need some cash, you can still be gaining some other worthwhile experiences, but do remember the camp counselor positions, lifeguard positions that many students have had, food service, hospitality have <laughs> done that. I always joke with everyone saying, hey, if you can deal with people at their absolute worst, you can work anywhere. So, but camp counselor, learn patience, hopefully. As some students are sharing, well, they try to learn patience. I said, okay, we won't share that. But all right, talk getting other college. I understand. You know, but it's still a matter of, you know, you taking responsibility, especially like guard. I mean, you know, since it's doing EMT work, wow, you, you're trying, someone else is trusting their lives with you. This is some important heavy duty responsibility, uh, dedication, maturity, leadership, teamwork, everything that employers are looking for when they are ready to hire you. Uh, especially even, even the, the large corporations too, they like seeing those early stuff because like you said, if you see in these job descriptions or internship descriptions, that's all they ask for. They're looking for leadership and teamwork hardworking, you know, because they know, you know, you haven't had any of your coursework yet that's going to be relevant. So taking you on as an intern is, is going to be a learning experience. They know that. They have to teach you. You're going to learn from them. You know, it's a building experience. It's, it takes a lot of effort on the employer too. never forget that. So um, understand that, that, you know, all these things build up to your next steps in your career. So um, to wrap it up to um, for any of us in the office here, uh, in the center, you can use YUCL career link is YU career link is great because that way you can when you log in, um, you have to um, you can see all of us. You know your schedule, which is very tight usually academically. So, and you know socially everything else too. Uh, you can see who's available when. Um, well, good old email too for my even myself personally. I always communicate with students. Hey, give me your little windows of opportunity. Let me know when you're available. We can set up a time. We also have live chat. You can also email our career center and then um, my colleagues will forward emails out to us too. We'll reach out to via email too. Um, and then also live chat you can use to set up appointments. That's what we usually find out. We've been finding live chat has been around here for a little bit, for a while now since we've been remote. But most of the time, if it's a very quick question, usually it's not. So we usually try to set up an appointment <laughs> you know, and, and, and go from there and say, okay, here, unless it's a very, very quick, straightforward question that can be handled versus live chat. Um, in addition, um, this is some extra information. There's my email. Um, you'll be able to find the slideshow um, and the webinar will be recorded here on YouTube or no YouTube channel. So you can always come back to if you ever need anything, some of the sites I mentioned. And then uh, to go from there, last bit of here is if anyone has any questions, um, let me drop out. Okay, so uh, no questions at the moment, but please, please, please do feel free to reach out to me. Say hello to any of us or, or always be here for you to um, assist. Uh, take care of yourselves, be well, and have a good evening.